Well, Shep, he said producing more vaccines for the world is among his main focuses right now. Pfizer has said it has capacity to manufacture at least two and a half billion doses of the COVID vaccine this year, and they've struck deals for 1.6 billion of those. I asked Albert Borla what happens with those 900 million doses not yet accounted for if they could go to countries that haven't yet had as much access. Here's what he said. The price should not be an obstacle because we are giving these doses at tier pricing. The rich countries, the high-income countries like the U.S., Europe, Japan, Canada, Australia, they are paying one tier. The middle-income countries, they are paying half of this price. And the low-income countries, they are offered these doses at cost. But of course, it's certainly true that wealthy countries have had access to many more doses sooner than lower-income countries. According to the World Health Organization last month, one in four people in high-income nations had received a COVID vaccine. Now, that compares with one in more than 500 in low-income countries. And as the U.S. gets close to authorizing the Pfizer vaccine for kids ages 12 to 15, some in the public health world have asked the question. Given that overall COVID strikes the young less severely, is it ethical to vaccinate adolescents in the U.S. ahead of high-risk adults in other countries? So we asked an ethicist, Art Kaplan at NYU. I believe the U.S. is not quite there with respect to sufficient population immunity not to do the 12 to 15-year-olds. Remember, part of the reason to vaccinate them is not just to protect them, although it's important to try and protect them, but it's also to cut down transmission. Now, Kaplan said it would be less of a question if more adults in the U.S. were choosing to get vaccinated. Shep? Meg, thanks. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.